All right, good afternoon. I'm gonna be helping you set up the sound system here at the Hitching Post. My name's Bear. And before we get into the video, I wanna give you a couple reminders of, you know, how to, how to take care of a sound system and how to get it set up easy and in a nice, calm and clean manner so that it works for everybody. Um, let's start with a couple things. Number one, don't stress out. Take your time, do it slowly and you know, remember that you're a team, whoever's there, whatever skills you have, it's enough and you can get these things solved if you take it slowly. Only change one variable at a time and just move step by step. So when you're setting up the sound system, I want you to think of it this way. All the big chunks that you have, say speakers, stands, mixing board, uh, power, all of those things need to be set up uh, first, get everything in place, and once it's in place, then you can start actually cabling things together. So I would suggest once everything's in place, then start setting up all your power cables. Make sure every speaker is powered. Make sure the mixing board is powered. Do not turn anything on yet. I'm just talking plugged in. Okay, once you know all the power is run and everything's in place, start slowly connecting the speakers to the mixing board. You know, you're going to be going out of the mixing board and into the speakers. That's the direction the sound is flowing. And once you get all the speakers plugged in, then whoever's playing that day, you're in your, um, your band, your multi-instrumentalist, your solo singer songwriters, you can get them plugged in. Maybe you just got two vocals and one guitar. You can figure out what channels you want that on of channels one through 16 and just take it nice and slow. So set everything up, the big parts of the PA, then plug in all the power, then plug in all the instruments. Then I want you to turn on the mixing board first. Then after you get the mixing board powered on and you make sure everything is muted, you can turn your speakers on because you don't want to turn your speakers on uh, and then turn the mixing board on second because that's going to make a popping sound or if there's something unmuted that was turned up really loud by the last person, um, that could uh, send quite a shock through the system. Um, and I'm talking sonically, you know, something loud. So we always want to keep it muted, quiet, and bringing things up in volume one at a time. All right? Now, after you've done everything with the show, I want you to shut down the speakers first, then the mixing board. Once everything's turned off, you can start unplugging all the RCA XLR quarter inch cables, all those cables make sound, and then you can unplug all the power and get that all wrapped up. Um, so set the PA system up in that method. I think you're gonna be good to go. Take your time, be kind to each other. Just remember it's only rock and roll. And um, I think in the following video, there's gonna be enough for you to get through and create some good sound um, until you learn a little more. And yeah, I hope you find this helpful. Have a good day. Have a great show. All right, we're back with Bear and Bjorn. Let's talk about outputs from this mixing board. Everything on the top of the console is an input, okay? Everything on the back is where sound goes out of. That means that it uses this type of connector. That's the female XLR end. We have on the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight XLR outs. It's aux one through six and aux one is going to be the stage stage left monitor on the ground aux two is the stage right monitor three and four we don't use currently because we don't have those monitors aux five goes to the subwoofer which is going to be right down there on the ground aux six goes to the fence the fence connector is this xlr that frank tucks in the overhang for the uh, air stream. so you'll see this I think Frank tucks it in like this, right? Yeah. Um, so you just take that out of the Airstream, plug that into six, and then main left and main right go left and right. And I do the audience perspective, right? So when you're talking about left and right for the mains, that's the left, that's the right. So those are all the XLRs, female end to male end that goes to your speakers. All right, this is the part of the video for getting familiar with the Hitching Post mixing board, which is the QSC Touch Mix 16. And this mixing board uh, has a couple features I wanna talk about for inputs and outputs. 
Anything you plug into the mixing board is on the top, 1 through 16. Anything that goes out of the mixing board, you can see is right here on the back, labeled like that. Uh, one thing about this is it has a touch screen. It has analog input knobs, so when you plug in a source like a microphone to input one, you're going to adjust the input for that microphone right here. That is different than the level of the microphone, which we will adjust there in a second. So inputs on top, outputs on the back. If you need extra inputs or outputs, they're right there, but that shouldn't really concern most people. Um, if you brought a condenser microphone, maybe a fancy vocal mic that uh, needs something called phantom power, you can see that the phantom power switch is right there. So I can just turn that on. So let's get to the main screen. Very simply, they put three buttons here. Uh, the record play button, we're not going to need to worry about. The menu button, you can see, takes you to different scenes that have been saved. Um, for, for the day you show up, you're probably just going to need to use this home button. And you're going to be hitting this home button a lot to get back to the main mix. Now, here we can see eight channels at a time. Well, what if you plugged something into, say, channel nine, and you go, I can't see it right here. At the top of the screen, you can see that you have little tabs for your inputs. 9 through 16, stereo inputs. Maybe you were plugging in a, uh, an iPod or something that you wanted to play uh, between sets. And then you've got your effects, your auxes, which send out to these outputs right here. So that aux page is an important one to know. And the, the auxes, interestingly enough, on this console are colored, and maybe we'll end up coloring the mic cables the same as the auxes later. Um, then DCA groups. For right now, we're gonna, no one needs to know what a DCA is, but it basically can control different channels independently. So, back to the first tab. I can always just hit, let's say I get somewhere weird. I'm just gonna hit home, and that's gonna take us back to these pages. So the left side, we just talked about the tabs that go across, inputs. Now we have our outputs. So it's pretty nice. Inputs here, going in here, and then these tabs are our outputs. What we're gonna do is actually uh, name some outputs today. But aux one, if I tap on that, you can see all of my faders get a little red line in them. And that allows me to send something, I'll bring those faders down, out of aux number one. So this output right here, if this is plugged into a monitor on the stage, aux one, and I wanted to hear a channel, I click on this aux one tab, I click on the channel that I want, let's say channel two is a guitar, I can use my finger to bring up the channel, or when a channel is selected blue, this blue knob, this is what it's for. Some people don't like using touch screens, so you can just go like that and adjust the fader, which feels a little more tactile. Um, don't worry if you, with these mixers, the way they design them is if you, if you're on a channel and you tap at the top, it's not going to move the fader and just blast full volume because I think a lot of people, a lot of us worry about that. What if I touch the wrong spot? Don't worry. You actually have to touch the, the fader and pull it like that. So it's safe to do. It's not just going to blow people away. Um, so these are your different auxes. We have six aux outs on this console that go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then, after that, we have aux 7 and 8, which you'll find right up here, and aux 9 10, which is right up here. I don't think we're going to be using those, but they are on this console. <clears throat> also, let's say that, uh, that you have, uh, we're going to check this out for a second, but you can see that after 12, do you see how these, the input jacks change? If you have something to plug in, like a guitar or a piano, a keyboard that's got quarter inch, you could plug it in right there. So this is probably a good spot to just straight plug in an acoustic guitar if you're not using something like a DI box, which if you're a solo singer songwriter, I recommend everyone having a DI box. So plug in here, adjust the level of what you have right here, and the fader is used to send out to a specific speaker. So if we want to go out of our main mix, our main left and right, which is the two speakers that are going to the audience, you need to go to the left-hand side all the way up to the main mix tab and click on that. And now this is what's being sent to the audience. So for instance, I could have all of this down, but go to aux one, 
that I set up as my monitor on the stage and I could turn myself up right there so I can hear myself, but the audience doesn't hear me yet. They go, hey, we can't hear you out front. Did you forget to go to the main mix and turn your music up there, right? And the cool thing is there's a master fader for the main mix and all of the auxes that you'll find on the right hand side of the screen. So let's say that we have a main mix and I get my vocal right here and my guitar right here and there's a bass player that's right there. What if I wanna turn all of that up without touching those three? I go all the way over here to our main left and right fader and I could use this to make adjustments up and down. So I usually run the master fader about, you know, 75%. So in case the audience is getting rowdy, I've just turned the whole thing up instead of having to go to my individual channels. Um, but let's say that you have your vocal really low like this and people are like, turn it up. And you've gone over and you've turned this thing up all the way and you're like, I can't hear it. Well, you're using this way quiet, right? So that's, that's the thing is be aware that uh, running these up near, it's called Unity, there's a little U up there. Up near there, you know, sh should be a lot of volume, especially with this, like this. Okay, now, when, if you had a microphone plugged into number one right now, the amount that this meter is gonna show is based off of this knob. This is your input knob, right? So if I crank this input knob uh, and it's distorting, but I turn down the fader, I'm still gonna have a distorted signal. So you wanna make sure your input knob is making sure that you're bouncing half to 75% of, of the way right here. That way you know you're not clipping anything. Clipping is another word for distortion. You don't wanna distort your inputs, so set these appropriately, then use the fader to decide how loud you wanna be in the speakers. Um, below that, you can see that there's some mute buttons that are, uh, I feel, pretty darn tiny. These work better on the iPad, but see that little mute? So say you're taking a break from uh, singing, you can just mute yourself right there, um, or you can set up something in the future called mute groups, which is over here. So for right now, to, to um, recap about this part of the mixing board, we've talked about things go in here, get adjusted, then you send them out to different areas here. So if you're adjusting something for the audience, make sure you're on main mix, not on aux four, thinking you're turning the guitar up. And then the outputs here just need to connect to the speakers you're using. Main left and right is the ones that are gonna be used for the audience. And aux one and two is gonna be the monitors. So if you're a single, single person today, just use aux one for the monitor in front of you. And if you've got a friend with you, aux two. We don't have any more speakers for three and four, but those could be there. Then we're gonna set up aux five to be uh, the subwoofer and aux six is actually gonna send into the hitching post building, which can go to all the little speakers on the fence. So let's say that uh, I go to aux six right here and which is green. And let's say I wanted to build a mix for the fence that had just a little bit of vocal only or something. You can, you can have an individual mix for the fence, which is pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, so each one of these auxes is its own mix. So if I click on aux one, everything I mix here goes to aux one, which would be the speaker on the front stage. If I want to mix something differently for the audience, I do that on the main mix. So hopefully that's, that's a start. If you are ever lost on here, hit the home button. That'll just get you out of panic mode. And as a little reminder, double check that the mute buttons on the bottom aren't red, right? Um, I personally like to keep channels muted I'm not using. That way, when I play somewhere, I just see two channels unmuted if that was me. And I know that there's no way, I don't know, some random pop or something is coming from channel eight or whatever. So um, I like to see faders down and things muted unless I'm using them. We are now at the point where um, you've plugged something into input one. Let's call it your vocal mic. Input one, we can see on our main page, the first channel, input one is right here. I can adjust the volume, I can mute and unmute it. And then uh, if you look at the top, it says in one, that's the name. If I need to adjust something on this input, I touch input one and it brings me to this overview page. This overview page allows you to see all the things you could adjust. I find it to be uh, nice to see, but I also wanna know that uh, 
that I can make things bigger. So once again, working from left to right on the top of the page, we can see overview equalizer. That's where you change the tone of your microphone. I'm sure most people know what a uh, EQ is, but if you don't, the left side is where the bass frequencies are. So if something is too bassy and boomy, get rid of some of this stuff. And if something needs or more trouble or less trouble, do it over here. And then you've got a couple bands to adjust things in the mid range. Um, it's actually a really powerful EQ, but uh, for right now, I just try not to go crazy with these. If you just need a little less bass and a little more upper mids, you know, keep it like that. If you find yourself doing things like this with the EQ, I don't think if that's gonna uh, get you the results you're that happy with. Maybe something is that messed up, but that's a lot of trouble you're adding and a lot of weird mids you're taking away. So just try to, you know, be smooth and little adjustments. Add a little air up top. And if it's too rumbly, you can use this low cut over here, which is hard to see, but right under this little guy, I can then click on that and start taking away all the bass, you know. So that's your EQ. Compressor, if you don't know what a compressor is, ignore this page. If you don't know what a gate is, ignore this page. If you do know what those things are, there are the pages for them. They have all the regular controls you're used to. Effects, this is a very important page for a singer songwriter, somebody. You can see that we have four effects over here. Uh, currently, dense reverb and lush reverb are effects one and two. Just if you need a little reverb for the day, click on that fader, it turns yellow. If it's yellow, you can use this knob to then turn up the reverb, which is the space on your channel. And you can, I would just try this dense reverb, maybe add a little of the lush and see how it goes. Um, then after effects, which is our reverb, it could be delays in the future, we get to our auxes. Uh, for me, I would do this a different way, but let's say on you remember that you're on channel one right now on channel one where do you want it to go let's say the aux one is your stage monitor i click on that and i say okay oh i can hear myself on stage great then i have a buddy with aux two that's their stage monitor and they say oh that's all i need just a little bit and then you want to send some to the fence which is number six okay and fence mix we've got and that's all you need to do. And let's say you're a bass player, you would then send your bass to aux five because that's the subwoofer. So I'm gonna zero these out. There's another way to do this, which I think is easier than using these micro little faders. But now we're gonna go over to the next tab, presets. You could use presets, um, but I just recommend starting from zero, not doing a preset, it's gonna engage a bunch of things. So let's leave presets alone if you don't know how to use them. And setup. Ah, uh, this is an important part. We can see over here, uh, the input one. I can click on the name now, and let's say for today we have uh, Arwen coming. Vox. Vox is a good short for vocal. Okay, and now I'll hit enter. So check this out. I just entered Arwen's name on the setup tab of the um, overview for this channel. And now if I go back to home, I'm gonna hit main mix, check out what channel one is now called, Arwen Vox. That's a lot easier for me to remember where the vocals are going into. So I believe Arwen's playing guitar today, so we're gonna do the same thing. Let's go to channel two, set up. I'm gonna click on that, try to use my little fingers here to go. Now, because it's just Arwen on guitar today, we're just gonna put guitar. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the home button again. Now I have two channels, Arwen's Vox and guitar. And we can unmute them down there. We can bring their fader up. We have a little pan control that is so darn micro. Panning brings, this, brings it from the left speaker to the right. We wanna keep the pan knobs uh, for this, this PA always in the middle. That's gonna be just the best thing to do for now. But uh, we have Arwen Vox, Arwen Guitar. Well, why don't we go over to our aux masters. Remember that our auxes are the outputs here, right? So I'm gonna name aux one. 
Let's name aux one monitor then. Clear. Boy. Uh, if you're comfortable with an iPad, I suggest doing that. So aux one, I just named monitor one. I'm gonna hit next. Now it's now I'm just labeling all these. So now I'm gonna go aux two is monitor two. Aux three, I'm actually gonna clear that one and because we're not setting any monitors up right now. So I like I like seeing if a channel's unnamed, that means there's nothing on it. Okay, aux five, we talked about aux five being our subs. And I'm just gonna put subwoofer in case people forget that sub is not a subgroup or anything like that. Okay, so subwoofer and I'm gonna go to next and I'm gonna hit aux six is Come on, fingers. Uh, backspace. Fence. The fence is where we have these awesome speakers uh, laid out to, to spread the sound out for the audience. Now I'm gonna go next. Aux seven and eight, we don't need that. Aux nine and 10, we don't need that. And we're done. So now I'm gonna hit the home button again and let's see what we see. Ah. Inputs one and eight are when Vox guitar, and then under aux masters, <clears throat> once it monitor one, monitor two. See, and I'm gonna turn these down because we're not even using those subwoofer and fence, and we'll also turn those guys down till we're ready. These are the master faders for each speaker, so we can see that monitor one, its fader is right there, monitor two, its fader. The subwoofer is down right now. The fence is down. Nine and ten will turn down. And our main left and right, if let's say, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you in the next segment, but that'll be about things freaking out. So there are our monitors, our inputs, and guess what? When we named all our monitors here, we can see subwoofer, fence, monitor one, monitor two. So let's take a break there. Okay. All right, we're ready. Okay, we're setting up the, the QSC K12 mains. You can see that there's two input holes for the pole, and I'm gonna do it on the hole that's closest to the front of the speaker right now, and you can see what results we get out of that. So, the hole closest to the speaker gets you a seven and a half degree tilt down. If this speaker was another four feet up, that might be nice to shoot to your audience, but right now, we want it to cover a large swath, so we're gonna take this off. And I'd suggest using the rear hole, and that's going to give us a 90 degree up and down. So don't miss that. Now the other cool thing is that this one's adjustable. So uh, depending on what we have here, I think this speaker should just go higher. Um, you know, shoot above the audience a little bit. So let's try. Mm -hmm just a little higher than the other speaker and uh, do not set up the speaker stands and tighten this without putting in the pin the pins actually what keeps it from going down this is just sometimes people leave the pin out and they're like ranking on this and all of a sudden they bust the little wheel off okay. so that's just to hold it nice and firm but the pin is in all right so let's put up the second speaker we got here same thing we just learned that we want to use the rear hole and that's going to keep this up and down. Uh, one thing is, if you have someone playing music between mains, if you point them like this, these speakers actually have a good display like that, so that might cause some feedback. So uh, keeping the speakers, you know, where they're actually spreading out for the audience, th these are not where the performer is gonna hear themselves, it's where the audience hears them. So Farwin needs to hear herself more. We're not gonna angle this for her today, we're gonna give her a monitor and do that, okay? Uh, so, one thing to remember, if you come back to the rear of the speaker, um, as long as these cables don't get lost, you can see that these power cables for these speakers are blue. There's a blue input. Well, why is that groovy? For a, a couple levels is that this, and I like wrapping these around the stand, right? So I don't see cables hanging everywhere. But this is a locking connector. So if it goes like this now, if someone trips over this, it's not going to get pulled, but I also have it going down the stand here. I think it looks better for the audience and also means that 
someone pulls on it, it has strain relief. So let's go over this QSC K12 and maybe you want to come to this side and I'll put it in the sun. All right. So we can see this speaker has an amp built into it on the back. For general purpose use, let's not talk about menus and stuff today. This is like someone who's just barely using this. Eventually you could pl plug an iPod in right there if you had a, a little 3.5 millimeter jack and that gain C in would be this. Uh, you know, that's if you don't have the mixing board, you're just putting this out in the dirt for one day. And... So we're not gonna worry about gain C or B because we're just gonna go into input A, top left input deals with this. If this is at zero, or maybe if it, you need to be really loud, three o'clock, that's all you need to do. So as long as this thing isn't down at off, the gain on A, I'll just keep it at zero. And our uh, send from the main, this is our left speaker, our main left out of the mixing board is gonna go to the input of our left main. Then the same thing on the other side, our main right out of the mixing board is gonna go right to there. And as long as you have this plugged in, this at zero, and the power is on, you're ready to then blast people away.